I'm Nicola Dill and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to teach you how to take this DIY kit and turn it into this miniature village shop. Perfect for any season. These are the tools you'll need. You'll need to purchase a kit from me. You can get this kit from my site and I'll link it in the description. You'll need some glue. I prefer this tight bond, quick and thick, because sometimes you like it quick and sometimes you like it thick, but uh, I'm not sponsored yet. I also like this glue. This glue is great for dollhouse wallpaper pasting and it goes on much like Vaseline and it will stick flat. This is Grandmother Stove's stick flat glue. Acrylic paints of your choice in colors. You'll need either a paintbrush or sponge applicator. I also sell this and the link will be in the description. Scissors. And this tool I use to put on this glue. This is the kit that you'll be starting with. For a limited time, I've included a little eye exam eyeglass shop marquee sign. We'll deal with this at the very end. Let's go ahead and open up our kit. The kit comes in two pieces, your wallpapers and your wood already cut for you to size. You ha always have a pretty side and an ugly side, as I call it. <laughs> but we're gonna play with the pretty side up. The first thing you wanna do is just do a dry fit of all your pieces to understand how it's gonna go together. So I will paint this. I can paint this separately and then glue it together. It comes with all the little Finishing touches for the windows. And again, doing a dry fit, you'll know which piece goes where. And they fit. And so I know that these are the pieces that go there. I'll try this one over here. Nope, see, it doesn't fit, but it fits right here. So you do a dry fit before you glue everything down just to make sure it's all in the right places. That takes care of the front. Now we look at our back pieces. This is actually the side. You can choose to have it going this direction or this direction. I like to think of it as somebody leaned up against the brick wall and made it fade away over time. So I'm gonna have this as the bottom side. So if you're looking at it, it will fit right along here and that's the side. So that's as thick as your building will be. Let's look at our other side. We have this side. So you can either have it this way or this way. It's your decision, okay? I've labeled it for you, roof. And this is the ugly side, and I made sure that I scored it on the ugly side. And this is the side that will be shown. Okay. We have a second floor, same thing, the ugly side and the prettier side. And this will go, this will be seen on the, in the middle. And then, of course, we have the bottom, and it's my signature plate with Main Street Village and the date. All right, let's get started. We'll go ahead and paint all of our pieces and get them prepped before gluing. So first take away your windows and you can put them to the side where they belong so you know. And we're gonna do this piece later. We're gonna paint this, but remember we have these windows. So I wanna have my windows be white. So I also want these to be white as well. 
So if you look over here, I've done that and I've painted the bottom section. I've painted a base and I've also painted white. Now what I love about my tool is this little applicator tool. It picks up a little sponge and then when I go in for paint, I just dab it and then I can work in those small areas without it bleeding through. So I have done that with the white paint where it will show. Uh, you'll see the excess white area will be covered eventually by these window panes. And we're also going to be painting these white or whatever color you choose. So I went ahead and did that for all the window spaces. And I also in put on a base coat. Now you're ready for the second coat, the second layer. And this is the second layer. You can paint this first, any other color you want. And load up the sponge. And then it's really easy. It's a great for when you're using something that has a score line and then it won't go down deep inside. It's just gonna lay on the top. You wanna go ahead and paint this whole thing. And then we use our thick glue and run beads of glue throughout. This is really quick setting, so you wanna work quickly. And then apply that layer on and stick it down. You'll do the same with the windows. It's okay if you get a little bit of glue on the other sides. You can clean those up really quickly and it won't be a problem. But these will all go back in once they're painted. Paint them first and then glue them in, okay? Now you'll see the one that I did previously. So I did the base color a darker yellow and I did a lighter yellow for the trim, the second trim piece. And for the windows and part of the railings on that second piece, as you can see here. So I just used my tool and I made the railings white, but the trim I did in a light yellow. So there's a lot of variations that you can do. And those were all glued down. Then you're gonna to wanna to work on the second piece. This is where it comes in handy for using this sponge tool. Because when I go in on the sides, I'll show you here. If I were to use a brush, the bristles will go into the scored lines. But with the pouncing sponge applicator, it just glides on top you need to get it loaded with paint. And then those score lines will keep showing through. If I used a paintbrush, those could get filled in and not be seen as well. And you can do a different color here as well or leave it plain like it was worn. And you can see that example on my other side that I did here. So with the sponge applicator tool, I was able to get a second darker color and just pounce around to give it a little bit more depth. And then I used um, a beige tone color for that worn area. And you can see the sponging technique there. These get painted and then flip them around, make sure you know which side is which and have them on that side. So if this is your back, you're gonna have your side pieces here. Okay. We're gonna work on the inner part. So now 
You don't need to paint any of this because I've included wallpaper for you. Okay. This is the back piece. So you have these ugly edges here and this part wasn't painted. The front has already been painted with all the windows adhered. This, just do a dry fit to make sure everything works and you may need to do a little trimming. That's where the scissors come in. So just dry fit it and look and make sure that all your edges are flush with the paper and they are. Now I like to use the stick flat glue. And you take a bit of the stick flat glue and just lay it on the wood. It gives about five to 10 minutes of wiggle room. So you don't have to go really fast with this. Just trowel it on. You don't have to get real specific, real detailed with it. But it goes on much like Vaseline. What I like about this glue is that it really does stick flat. It doesn't bubble up like some other decoupage glues do. And it decoupage glues tends to dry really quickly. And this does not. This allows you to move it slightly to make adjustments. And I found with other decoupage glues, they sometimes will stick and bubble and um, they also can tear if you try to move them. But really they just dry really fast and so I prefer this so that I can get all done in one at one move as opposed to doing a little bit and risking moving the paper too much. Okay, so I've got my glue on the entire surface. And now at the top, I'm going to just fix the top and then roll it down. And it really does stay flat. It's the perfect glue. It won't come up. Once it's dried, it's on there. Um, but you could still work at it for another five to 10 minutes before it dries. So if you made a mistake, you could do that. I don't think you can do that with any other glues. So that's why I love this glue. I have a few in my shop. Um, but you can also look for it online. Grandmother Stoves Stick Flat Glue. Okay. And then we affix the other sides. Let me see. I want to make sure this is the way I'm going to have my walls like this. So make sure that you put your back, uh, your back wallpaper down first because these will then get glued on. So now let's find our side wallpaper pieces. Okay, okay. Let's go ahead and affix our side pieces. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Don't do what I did. But this is a good lesson of reminder to dry fit your pieces to make sure they fit. As you can see on one side here, it goes over a little bit and down at this bottom too. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue right there. Have it stick. So I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the other one on and then I'll just fix that with scissors. That's all right. So you don't have to worry if you do make a little mistake. Look how nice and flat that is. I love that. 
All right, so there's a little bit of extra. So you can take a craft knife and just remove that, or you can take your scissors and do the same carefully. may not be the best, but that's okay. <laughs> just dry fit it first, and then you won't have this issue. I'm just showing you how to fix it. <laughs> if, you, if you mess up like I do, I can show you how to fix it. All right, so we did that. I'll go ahead and do this side. So these would have already been painted. But you can also paint them afterwards. And then these will affix right like that with your thick and quick tight bond glue. I'm done with this one. Oh no, we're not. Now we need to do the floors for the roof. I'm just gonna keep it plain. So I'll put that to the side. This is where you can decide if you wanna use the spectacle shop sign or not. It's supposed to look like tiny little mosaic tiles like that. Uh, you can decide if you want to use that. If you did want to use that, this is the floor. This is the floor. So your spectacles would go here and you'll want to trim like that, and it would just affix like that, okay? But since I already have one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that does not have that. So there's two other pieces in your kit, a bigger one and a smaller one. And the smaller one is for the second floor, and then this one is your extra. You get to choose with the tiles or without the tiles. So. Because this is my second one, I'm going to do this out. I'm just going to trim that off. And make sure that it fits nicely. And it has a little bit of overhang on this side. So I'm just going to trim that off. All right, same thing. Take our little palette knife, our little trowel, and glue on the flooring. And you can use decoupage glue if you don't have this or can't get this. Um, but if you plan on doing more of these, uh, you may want to invest in this glue. It's not an investment, it's pretty inexpensive. It's less than $10. And it will last you a very long time because you can see how very little I use. Okay, and then just lay that on, stick it flat, let that dry. And now we're looking for our second floor. And the same thing, you take the smaller floor and dry fit it to make sure that it does or does not need trimming. This one did. The machines are never 100% at cutting, so that's why it's always wise to dry fit all of your pieces first. the second floor. 
Now with the second floor, I like to dry fit all these pieces on first. So this white line straight across is where your second floor is going to be glued on. And you leave a little room on either side for your side pieces. And they just affix, same with the glue. The white line there would be the side of the second floor. And the pieces just glue like this. Okay. So I'm gonna add some glue to both sides and the front part of my second flooring. I'm going to be using my Tight Mom Quick and Thick. Not sponsored yet. And don't worry, that score line that says second floor will not be seen. Unless somebody sticks their head all the way up inside your house, which is rude. All right. So I'm just going to eyeball it and put it in the middle, leaving that space on either side. And then that will stay up. That's what I love about this glue is that it's so thick, it will just hold up. It is pretty quick, so you want to move pretty quickly. And I put glue on that side, and then I can line it all up. All right, and get some glue on this side. And it was affixed to the back of the front piece. And we have glue on the side here that will go onto this side piece in the white area. And that's it, that's pretty easy. Now just lift it up carefully, make sure that it is all together. And then you can run some glue on the bottom sides. See how quick this glue is? You can't do this with normal white tacky glue. It will fall apart. But with this quick and thick glue, you can hold it already. You saw this is real time. There's no editing involved in that. And then just fix it on boom same thing with the roof you could paint it if you wanted to I just run a little bit of glue on either side and that fits just on the top and then that's it okay so let me show you this part here so this is the inside and I added little ribbon trims that I got from um, my craft store, my sewing store. It's just ribbon uh, that came on a spool, little lace ribbon, and I made it, I just snipped the sec segments off and adhered them with the quick and thick glue. Here and here, this is a different size one. And they look like little um, curtains. So then you would have the front piece on right, with all your windows painted. Now we would put on, if you wanted this to be an eye exam shop or glasses shop, then you would use the included free gift. Now this is a limited time, so um, as a free gift. Uh, later on, this will be a separate purchased piece if you wanted to. Otherwise, um, you can. there'll be different marquee signs that you can choose from. But right now I only have the one. So this is like a little puzzle that you just pull out. Let's see. Okay. There's three pieces. This is not, this is um, discarded. It was just for packaging reasons. There is a bigger circle than a smaller circle. And this fits right on to the small circle first and then the big one. And so you would just put glue on there. 
right? So affix some glue and that's how it stacks up. So just put some glue in between there and then some glue on the back and these will all stay together once glued down and then you affix it to wherever you want it to be. I made it so that the size can fit right into the middle and it would overhang. So I have my finished version here to show you. So you can see the eye exam marquee. Like that. And that's it. You can dress this up however you want. I put on a wreath earlier and then I put this on my mantle with a votive candle. Uh, make sure you use a battery power votive candle. Don't use a real candle because um, this is made of wood and that's basically kindling to start a fire. We don't want that. <laughs> Thanks so much for playing with me. Thank you.